Welcome to Money Control's Business News Roundup. Here are the top headlines of the day. Finance Minister Nirmala Sitharaman may table union budget in Parliament on July 22nd, reveal sources. Bajaj Housing Finance files DRHP for Rs 7,000 crore IPO and paid in Bajaj Finance to sell Rs 3,000 crore shares. GST Council to meet on June 22nd will no respite likely for online gaming companies. Tata Group is in talks to acquire a majority stake in the Indian unit of Chinese smartphone maker Vivo. India's wholesale inflation rises to 15-month high of 2.61% in May. Bank of Japan keeps rates steady, decides to lay out bond taper plan next month. Chinese automakers overtake US rivals in sales for the first time. Taylor Swift's Eras Tour set to add an estimated 1 billion euro to the British economy, according to Barclays. Let's dive more into the details of these headlines. Finance Minister Nirmala Sita Raman is likely to table the Union Budget 2024 in Parliament on July 22nd. The final decision on the date is still awaited. Sita Raman is set to become the first Finance Minister to present seven consecutive Union Budgets, surpassing the record of Murarji Desai, who had presented six budgets in a row. The first session of the 18th Lok Sabha will begin on June 24th and the session will conclude on July 3rd. Bajaj Housing Finance has filed the DRHP with Capital Markets Regulator SEBI for its proposed IPO to raise as much as Rs 7,000 crore. The public issue includes a fresh issue of shares worth Rs 4,000 crore. Parent Bajaj Finance Limited will sell shares worth another Rs 3,000 crore via an offer for sale according to the prospectus. Well, Money Control was the first to report the firm's listing plans on March 27th. As the government announces the meeting of the much-awaited GST Council, sources indicate that the online gaming companies are unlikely to get any respite. Online gaming companies have been pushing for a review in the GST Council based on the decision of the Council itself, which had said that it would review the challenges and progress of online companies under the clarity of 28% GST on actionable claims, which kicked in from October 1, 2023. Tata Group is in talks to acquire a majority stake in the Indian unit of Chinese smartphone maker Vivo, which has been seeking local partners following a government push to involve domestic companies in its operations, including manufacturing and distribution. The discussions have reached an advanced stage where talks began around valuations. Vivo has been seeking a higher valuation than what Tata's are offering. The Tata's are interested in the deal, but nothing has been finalized yet. A source privy to the matter told Money Control. Well, Money Control had on April 8 reported that Vivo and Oppo were in talks with Indian players for their local units amid growing scrutiny in the country. India's wholesale price index based inflation rose for the third straight month to 2.61% in May on a year on year basis as against 1.26% a month ago. Data from the Commerce Ministry showed on June 14. The month-over-month -month change in the WPI index for May stood at 0.2% as compared to April. The rate of inflation based on the WPI food index increased from 5.52% in April 2024 to 7.40% in May 2024. Retail inflation eased to one-year low of 4.7% in the month of May. The Bank of Japan kept interest rates unchanged on Friday but said it would trim bond buying in the future to allow long-term interest rates to move more. At its two-day policy meeting, the central bank said it would continue to buy government bonds at the current pace, but it decided to come up with a specific plan to trim purchases for the next one to two years at a subsequent policy-setting meeting in July. As widely expected, the BOJ maintained its short-term interest rate target in a range of 0 to 0.1% in an unanimous vote. Automotive companies in China sold more cars than their US counterparts for the first time last year, boosted by BYD and growth in emerging markets, researcher Jato Dynamics said in a report published Thursday. Chinese brands led by Shenzhen-based BYD sold 13.4 million new vehicles last year, while American brands sold about 11.9 million. China's sales growth also outspaced the US, up 23% from the previous year compared to the US's 9%. Taylor Swift's three nights of sold-out concerts in Edinburgh, Scotland, triggered a financial boost to both the cities. Swift's Eras Tour is set to add an estimated 1 billion euros, which is approximately $1.27 billion, to the British economy, according to research from UK bank Barclays. 
The tour spans 22 countries and 152 dates over 21 months and has already shattered records as the highest grossing concert tour of all the time, surpassing 1 billion dollar in revenue in its first 8 months. And she has a total of 15 shows planned in the UK including her three performances in Scotland.